Hey guys, just gonna be making a quick video today on a Milwaukee tool sign build. I wanted to make one for the garage for a while now and I finally got some time to do it. And I have some scrap materials left over here that I'm gonna be using. Uh, but I do have a lot of DeWalt stuff, if you haven't noticed in some of my videos and other things, but I do have Milwaukee as well. And out of the two, I think Milwaukee has a way cooler looking logo and I think it'll look better in the shop. I'm just, I'm just a big fan of the logo. So uh, I'm gonna use some quarter inch HDPE for the front of it. And then I'm gonna use some half inch MDF that I have here. And I'll kind of show you what I'm gonna be working with here. So I got some half inch MDF and some quarter inch HTP left over from another project. And I think it's gonna work out really well for the front. Uh, it's already white, so I'll have to paint it. And this MDF paints up really nice too. I'm gonna to probably paint it red, obviously. So I'm gonna go ahead and run in and get started on a design on the computer real quick. And I'll kind of show you that here in a second. Just gonna make, it's gonna be real simple, just like the actual logo. And I'll make a background design too for the, for the back piece here out of the MDF. Uh, so we'll do that now. And also I apologize for the noise from the heater. Sorry, it's pretty cold outside, so uh, I didn't want to shut it off. So I jumped onto Google and found the Milwaukee logo just in a vector format. Uh, so I made a, a, an artboard here in Adobe Illustrator with uh, limits that are the same size as my CNC machine. And this is just already a vector, so I don't need to really mess with it too much. What I am gonna do is take this layer here and I'm gonna copy it just so I have another one to mess with for the back. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the top layer off, which will be, will be the letters here. And I'm going to offset the path to make my outline for my backboard. So I'm just gonna highlight the text here, which is not actually text, but the vector, the tool, or I'm sorry, the paths. And we will go to a path, offset path, I've kind of been messing with it here a little bit already. So I had it at 0.95 inches to offset these paths here, which looks about right to me. So we're going to stick with that and just hit OK. What I'm going to do now um, to make this all one piece is we're going to basically use the Pathfinder dialog box, which if you don't have, you can go to your window and go down here to Pathfinder and turn that on. And we're going to combine all those offset paths into one block. We have some little areas in the middle, so what I'm just gonna do is just make uh, a real quick random path around here just with the pin tool, just to kind of get rid of those spots, like so. And then we're going to basically combine it all again one more time. And we have, we have our backboard. So it's not really quite what I want yet because these, if you can tell, let me shut this off real fast. We're going to change this color here, something that we can see a little better. And we'll turn our bottom layer back on. So this is kind of what it's leaving with us right now. So these, you can see, they don't actually come out to a point. So I think I'm just going to mess with those a little bit here. Just using the uh, direct selection tool, we're going we're gonna to actually edit some of these actual anchor points. Maybe just do something like that. Something like that. And then I think I wanna get rid of this little nub right here that's sticking out. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And we're just going to do that. That looks really good. And just so we kind of have an idea what it's gonna look like, we're going to just change the color real fast. Just give it a red tone. And that's what we're gonna have when we get out there. So I'm gonna export this right now into DXF, something that I can use in uh, AutoCAD Fusion 360. And I'll make some tool paths for this and then we'll get it cut out. Okay, so I went ahead and brought the vector in the AutoCAD Fusion 360. And I've already done a little bit of work here. I didn't want the video to be really long and it wasn't really meant to be a super instructional video, just kind of to document what I'm doing. But basically what I did here is I just brought the uh, DXF file in and then extruded all the paths. So you can see here my Milwaukee logo itself is a quarter inch thick um, compared to the MDF here that I'm going to use will be a half inch thick. 
and I am going to be machining uh, some dowel holes in the back. Um, at, or in, I'm sorry, in the in the front face of the backboard, and then in the back of the actual Milwaukee uh, logo, which I will cut face down for that reason, so I can machine these holes in the back here. And each one of these holes coordinates with the hole on the backboard. So the reason I'm doing that is just because this text is three pieces. You have the M and the, you have the I that's separate. And then you have the rest of the body of the text here. And I want it to be straight. And I want it to look just like it does in the computer. So this is the best way for me to do that. And it will also help um, hold the actual text to the board. Since um, HTPE itself is not really easy to glue, uh, you have to usually have special glue for it to bond really well but I have some I use, I'll show you here in a little bit, that works pretty decent with it. So now that I've had those paths extruded, I'm um, gonna make some tool paths I'm in the manufacturer section of Fusion, and then I'll send it to the computer out in my shop, and then we will get to cutting. So here in the manufacturer section, after I've kind of worked with it here for a minute, I have a couple setups here, one for the back and one for the front. Just made myself a pocket tool path here. You can see it's just gonna go through and hog out some holes real quick. And then have a contour tool path as well. It's just going to cut the perimeter of the sign itself. And I'm going to do that in three passes with this MDF. I'm going to be using an eighth inch bit. So three passes I found works pretty good with the half inch stuff. It's not too much for it to handle. And then basically the same thing down here with the Milwaukee text. Have another setup for that by itself. And it's going to have the same thing. It's going to have the pocket tool path for the holes. You can have a separate 2D contour. Uh, path to cut out the inside of some of the text some of the like the E and the A Just so that's done first Otherwise it causes a problem because this will be this will be cut out already and I won't be able to hold it in place And then the final contour cut will cut out the um, outside perimeter of the text. Um, I don't use tabs when I'm doing um, Text that I want to look nice. I just don't like you know, I don't like having to sand the tabs off So we're just gonna let it cut it out and let it set where it is and that works pretty well for me usually with HTPE, so we'll go with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and send this out to the machine and we will get to cutting on it. I'm gonna put this stuff face down in the machine. Um, I'm gonna be cutting it that way because I'm gonna have pockets in the back or I'm gonna have actual dowel, uh, dowel holes in the back to go on the front of the sign, so to hold it together. So that's this will be the side that's gonna be facing up. I'm gonna be using an O flute uh, bit on this HTPE. I know it's probably hard to see um, just like that. I get them on Amazon, they're pretty cheap. I've had really good luck with them, these HQ Masters. Um, they last a while for me, so we're gonna keep using them. So if you've never machined HDPE, it's pretty satisfying. It just almost looks like rice and it cuts really easily. So that gets our text cut out. Let's see, I'll just get it a little clean off. I'll get some, use the vacuum on it and get it, knock off some of these little, just little fuzzies on the edges. And then we'll get the base cut out next. Okay, now 
now we're just gonna put in a straight flute uh, so we can cut the MDF. I get these on Amazon as well, and they're the same brand, the HQ Master. There's our back, and I got the dowel holes. So I've got some sawdust in them still for my 3 8 inch dowel rod to line up all the letters. All right, we'll just hit all these holes with an air compressor real quick, and then uh, the rest of it, and then we'll be ready to go for paint. Duke, you gonna help me finish this thing? Huh? Huh? Gonna be using just some red acrylic paint from Walmart. Uh, this stuff works pretty good on this MDF. Had pretty good luck with it. And I'm just gonna use a foam brush to paint the outside perimeter of it first, and then I'll use a roller, just a foam roller to do the rest of it. I always try to make sure when I'm doing this that I, I don't roll backwards on an edge because it'll sometimes make the paint drip over the edge. So I try to just kind of do a, a push stroke to the edge. Now I'm just really lightly going over all of it. Um, these foam, this foam brush, for some reason, when I do this with the acrylic paint, leaves some air bubbles. So this just kind of breaks them all up real quick. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. I'll probably put it in front of the heater real quick and then we'll come back and put another coat on. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my roller out and we will cut some dowels to go in the dowel holes that will do our lining for our text. And I, I got to cut about 14 of these, about this big. And I'll be using just a carpenter's knife and my drill to do that. Now let me wash this out and we'll jump to that next. All right, I'm just going to be using some 3 16 inch dowel just because I had it on hand. And I'm going to be putting it in my drill just so I can spin it in the drill and that'll help me cut it faster. And I'm just going to use a carpenter's knife. I'm going to try to move this down here where we can see a little better.
plenty. Ended up using this one. Uh, this was a little bit better. This, the serrations on this kept kind of grabbing, so this worked pretty well though. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and just kind of get the little tip off into these. All right, now let's go get the base and we'll start putting the letters on. I'm just gonna be using some E6000 glue to put that on. Um, or put those dowels on and the letters. It sticks really well to the actual wood and it actually bonds decently to the HDPE. Um, even though there's not a whole lot that really sticks to HDP very well unless you do like actual plastic weld. Um, like, a, like there's special epoxies they make for it, but this works well enough for what I've done in the past. Just for holding letters on, it's not gonna be under any kind of strain or any load, so it works pretty well. All right, we'll start here at the M. This E6000 is kind of stringy, so I like to have a just a spare piece of something here, and I have a little short piece of HDPE, that, a scrap piece I use just to kind of like, you know, wind up the extra glue so it doesn't get on the surface. And I'm just gonna be putting basically a couple dabs in the holes here, and then we'll put the dowels in the holes, and then we'll put a little, just a little bead on the back of the letters, not too much, so I don't want it to squeeze out, but just enough to hold the letter in place. I'm just putting a little bit in there. It doesn't take much just because the these dowels are fitting really tight. I'm just kind of pushing them down and twisting them in, make sure the glue gets distributed. But again, I mean, they fit tight enough. I think they're not gonna be a problem. All right, I'll put a little bead here. Okay, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue down in the holes. Here. When this is all done, I'll set uh, a block on the on all this to hold it all down, but it's nice and flat, so they're sitting down pretty good. It's nice. It makes it way easier having the dowels in there. And I'm gonna use another little piece of dowel to kind of line this up so that this sits straight. Just kind of test it here. It goes like that. So there it is all glued up. Next thing we need to do is just make a spot for it on the uh, pegboard up here and then it'll be ready to go. So this is it all done guys, up on the workbench or above the workbench. I think it looks awesome.
Sorry for the shaky handheld video, but that's what you get on this channel. Turned out really nice. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, uh, thumbs up is really appreciated. And uh, check out some of my other videos if you'd like to. And again, thanks for stopping by.